it's about time that I make a video about my art supplies. I'm not gonna focus on every single thing I own. I'm always finding something new. So who knows, maybe a year from now or a few months from now, I'll make an updated video on my art materials if there's a significant amount of change. But today I'm gonna focus on my absolute favorites and essentials, just things that I can't live without and always purchase and I'm gonna continue to purchase. Oh, quickly, I wanna throw in a disclaimer. These are all my opinions. These are all products that I purchased with my own money. So I'm gonna get into oil painting first. I am not very particular with brands. The ones that I use, I will put up on the screen somewhere. Grumbacher, <laughs> Grumbacher. I don't know. Windsor & Newton also produces wind tint. They're not really the best quality, but they're actually really great quality for the price. The colors are really bright. You can order them online or you can get them at Michael's and most art supplies stores also carry them. If you are just trying to get started with oil paint, I do recommend you try out something that's a little bit cheaper like Winton's or um, Dale & Rowney has a really nice set and it's got all the essential colors. You can also add a few in that you like on your own. If you start off with something cheaper, you're not gonna feel like you're wasting the paint. You can feel free to mess up and just experiment and play with it and it's not gonna feel like a waste. I have a bunch of these that I started off with. They kinda last me a long time, but I have been periodically replacing them with the more professional artist grades. Out of the cheap ones that I've tried, Winton and Dale Rowney are probably my favorites. When it comes to the more expensive oil paint brands, they're pretty much numbered in series. You've got series one through five, it depends on the brand. And the higher the series, the more expensive the paint is gonna be because it's more expensive to create depending on what pigments they have to add in. It's definitely worth it, it's definitely an investment. Another essential that I forgot to mention is my palette. I've actually made a video about it before and I'll link it in the description. It's basically just a piece of glass that I took from a cheap picture frame and I stuck a piece of paper to the bottom of it and I paint on top. And I probably would not be able to live and function on this planet without my trusty glass scraper. This is what I use to clean all the dried paint off my palette. It's the best. When it comes to brushes, I'm also not particular with brands. I use synthetic ones. I'm pretty sure they're synthetic. Once again, like brands, it doesn't matter. It's like the camera doesn't make a good photographer. It's what you do with it. Well, having slightly better brushes, it will help a little, you know, <laughs> but it's not gonna make you paint amazingly. That's just up to you and how hard you work and how much you practice. The brushes I use the most are Filbert's, liners, and round-ended ones. Sometimes I forget to clean them and the brushes die. I store my brushes in jars that I savaged from groceries and really it's super convenient. Filbert's are basically like a round top brush like this, but as you turn it, it's flat. Kind of flat, but wide. <laughs> this is probably my favorite brush to use. I have them in a few sizes. They're just amazing. I also use detailers, which is basically exactly what it's for. It's for doing details. It's like a thin little skinny brush. The other kind of brush I use is round-ended ones. They're pretty much the same with all around and they have a more rounded top. For the most part, it's just filberts and liners. Cheap brushes probably won't last you as long as more expensive ones and they're cheaper to replace. Oil paint's kind of a rough process sometimes. They tend to fall apart after a while of using them. You'll notice the hairs start coming off and onto your painting. So the next thing I wanna get into is mediums and solvents. I started off using turpentine. <laughs> smells like Christmas trees, but it's also toxic, so I should stop inhaling it. Mm -hmm. I switched over to Terpenoid. I go through a lot of these. When you do mix this in, the paint doesn't dry glossy. It doesn't smell. I would suggest using this on your bottom layers because you do want to follow the rule of oil painting fat over lean. As far as mediums go, sometimes I make a mixture of 50% Terpenoid and 50% Stand Oil, but Stand Oil is basically this stuff. An oil painting medium speeds drying, improves flow, add directly to color, or thin with grum time. See, they want to promote their brand, which is Grumbich, Grumbich, sure. Am I pronouncing it wrong? So that's what I mix it with, terpenoid. I used to use linseed oil, but I found it has like this yellowing tendency. So I tried out stand oil, and I do like it. One of my favorite things to use is Liquin, which this one is from Windsor & Newton. Um, this is Liquin Original. They have a few different kinds of liquid. This is an alkyd medium, linseed oil that's been treated with acid and alcohol. I guess they took the alcohol out of alcohol and they took the ass out of acid and they got alkyd. Genius! This makes your paint dry super freaking fast. It dries on glossy, which I really like. You wouldn't want to like coat your whole painting with it and start glazing because the smell will be really strong and 
I just use it in small amounts, a little bit here and there. But that brought me to search for another product, Oleo Gel. I actually got some paint thinner on this cover here and some of the writing came off. And I ordered it from a website called naturalpigments.com. So it's just made with fume silica and linseed oil and I really, really like it. It also dries glossy, it takes a while to dry. I think it actually increases drying time. I wasn't sure about this. I started painting with it and then I come back like a few days later and the paint is still wet. Whereas this one would have been dry a day. Now this is more of like a gel. So this pretty much retains the shape of the paint. It's not going to make it all splattered around your palette. It's going to stay the same shape. And it also goes on really smooth when you're trying to glaze. This is actually really, really great for glazing. This is probably my favorite thing for glazing right now. So the next thing I want to get into is watercolors. My favorite watercolors are from Windsor. Newton. It's this little palette. This needs to be clean. The paints are all completely out of order from their original packaging. I've dropped this thing a few times, okay? Stuff fell out. I still have a long way to go before it's done. I don't paint with watercolors as much as I paint with oil, but I really like this palette. This is what I use for all my watercolor pieces. The thing is, it doesn't have the color black, so you have to make it yourself, and I pretty much just combine a whole bunch of the dark colors like greens, blues, browns, reds, and it makes black. For watercolor paper, I make sure to buy something that's at least 300 grams. There's also watercolor canvases and boards you can use, but I use paper. If you're just using regular paper, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna handle the water. It's gonna tear and rip and it's gonna be a disaster, so stick to watercolor paper. I do keep my oil brushes and watercolor brushes separate. I'm just using water with watercolor and I'm very gently applying it, so the brushes tend to last longer. And that's where cheaper brands like Artist Loft come in handy because they will actually last a long time for watercolors. If you don't murder your brushes like I do, then feel free to mix them. It's up to you. Everyone works differently. Currently, I have two sketchbooks. I have this toned gray paper one, which is exactly what it is. It's just toned paper and it's gray. <laughs> and then I have my little sketchbook, which I draw more than that one. I take this traveling with me. I take it on walks. I take this pretty much everywhere with me at this point. This one's actually new. Got some sketches in here. I drew this in an airport. Oh, still have my boarding passes in it. Oh yeah, all window seats. The other thing I use for my drawings is this fixative. It says it dries glossy, but it really doesn't dry that glossy. It smells pretty gnarly though, so I would suggest using it outside or in a ventilated area. You only really need like a few sprays, like shh, done. If it's for smaller drawings. I actually use this on my sketchbook. Once it dries, it doesn't smell like anything anymore. You can actually touch the charcoal drying and it's not going to come off on your hand, which is great because when it comes to a sketchbook and you've got all these drawings together, they tend to like smudge on the other page. Well, this will prevent that from happening. When it comes to pencils, lately I have been absolutely loving charcoal. This is from a brand called generals i think it comes with these dark charcoal pencils and a uh, white charcoal pencils the white charcoal pencil is really great for that dark toned paper they just go on so smooth like the white charcoal pencil from a different brand i tried was just Big disappointment but I really really like this one they're really cheap I think you can also get them at Michaels also came with this eraser you can shape this eraser to whatever you want it to be and it takes off charcoal so perfectly so a lot of times I'll just make like a pointy end like this and I'll use it to draw because it'll just take off the charcoal so perfectly and it's really great for doing highlights if you're working with white paper. If you're working with dark paper, obviously you want to use the white charcoal pencil for highlights. And of course, I also use graphite sometimes. You know, 4B, 2B, 6B, 8B, H, F. I use those pencils too, but mostly I've been loving charcoal. And I think it's because it's kind of similar to painting. Sometimes I even bring in paintbrushes to smudge charcoal. It's just so much faster. You don't have to sit there with a pencil like shading. You just take a freaking brush and you like smoothly do it. I just love painting so if I can draw and make it feel kind of like painting, I'm gonna stick to that. So I think I covered just about all the essentials. This is just what I've discovered that I really like after years and years of going through different kinds of materials and experimenting and I'm still experimenting and learning and I'm gonna be learning forever, okay? I'm gonna be learning when I'm like 80. I think you can never really stop learning with art. There's just always gonna be something new to try, something you haven't done before. Let me know about your favorite art supplies in the comments. Bye guys, mwah.